Peace, 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 family. How you all doing? I hope all is well with you. My name is Keisha. I'm the owner of Ascendant Astrology, and I am your astrology coach. Today, I'm going to be discussing Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn. This will happen on June 11th, um, and it'll be at 29 degrees which is an anoretic degree, did do a video on this already. So the only difference is now is it's retrograde. And so this is just kind of going to be like a short little reminder of what exactly this is going to bring about and all the good spirits. So 29 degrees is lots of drama and endings. So I think, uh, actually, we might have another one of these retrogrades at the end of next year as well. Um, I think it'll be retrograde until November. And I think it's going to happen the same way next year. So we're just... It's like uh, that Capricorn energy is like finalizing itself ending things completely and so if we think the lockdowns were bad and post and um you know um uh covid was bad i think um you know pluto getting ready to sh show his ass you know um i think there's going to be more endings um, bigger endings, completions, and finalizations of things this time and the next time. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. But um, 29 degrees is also um, the third deacon, which is a Mercury deacon. And so Mercury rules business transactions, business, digital systems, apps, devices, workers, um, communications, contracts, public transportation, um, and documents among many other things. But just to give you a brief, you know, overall view of what this is or what it could be, uh, those would definitely be the strongest things that I think because Capricorn and Mercury together are really good at business, if anything. Capricorns and Mercury energy come together. Um, this is about making business deals and um, getting structures and systems in place around themes of business and your workplace. Um, and so um, I think we're going to see a lot more downfall with those types of things um, or changes around those types of things that are final. Like, I think right now we're like up in the air. Do we keep hybrid or do we go back in full time? Whatever is chosen, that's going to be it. Or because we have another round of this, it could be like whatever's chosen now, we'll have now until that next time around to reevaluate. Okay, so whatever we chose, is that what we really want type of energy? Um, Pluto is bringing up crime, corruption, abuse, power struggles. Um, and because Mercury's here, this could also be in the streets, gangs and, um, you know, <laughs> gang activity and violence. Um, and then Capricorn is the breakdown of organized crime, government structures, slowdowns, shutdowns and lockdowns. It could also be um, authority figures, people in uniforms, uh, workers' rights, media, 
and making decisions around these topics. So again, a lot of work and business themes are going to be coming up quite heavily during this transit. And um, really the continuation of, again, just asking that bigger question, whatever we chose from what we experienced in 2020, do we like it? Is it working for us? Is it going to get us by? Is it sustainable? Is it realistic? Because Capricorn's like, I'm going to need you to be like realistic about whatever choices that you're making right now. I, I want you to come down to reality. Let's get really real here. And is this really working? Are things really getting done? Are things progressing? Are we learning from these things? Um, you know, uh, it could be stuff like that going on. It could feel like a lot of pressure when it comes to communicating um, how we understand law limitations, how we deal with the uh, authority figures, how we get along with our bosses and the time we give to our careers. Uh, this could be about the agreements we sign when we get credit cards or mortgages or any other types of agreements we sign when it comes to Pluto. This could be bills, uh, loans, um, you know, and kind of the entire process around setting up your business um, and things of that nature. So a lot of those things can either come up in question or uh, people might be tested around it. Do you have a business and you're saying you have a business, but it's not registered type of thing? Um, what's the point of having a business registered? Does that really affect you or doesn't it affect you? How serious is that, right? So a lot of these things can come up around this time as tests to uh, get us in, in alignment with what it is we say we want to do, grow, build, or create. Um, overall, we're seeing that over the last 20 years, we've been focused on greed, consumerism. And when I say we, that you know, that's to be taken lightly. We, I bet if you put your mind to it, when you listen to these key words, you know who we is. And in a sense, if we're being honest, a lot of us have consumed, you know, uh, following the laws of these, these things as well, that we might fall under these things as a way or a means uh, to survive, but it's like, at what cost? So I think I, I, I remember doing a video. I can't remember which one it was, sorry. But I was talking about how we could get to a point where people are realizing that, um, or people might start to stand up when it comes to sacrificing their values, who they are and what they want for money. So we might see like in Hollywood, a lot of people are dropping their contracts despite how much money they're getting, like Fuck that. I, I don't care. You can give me all the money in the world. What I'm not going to do is sacrifice my values, my culture, my beliefs, my morals, my ethics for some, you know, big dollar contract amount. Right. Um, and on an everyday level, it could still be something to that effect, but it might not be so much the money like in your career is like, your boss is a dickhead. And even though you can ignore them and, and go and work around them and whatever, it's like, I'm not going to be coming to work, uh, tiptoeing, walking on eggshells to make you comfortable. Meanwhile, I'm living in turmoil and, you know, with the microaggressions and all those kinds of things that can be coming up quite heavily where you just might get people that stand up and, and say no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make that sacrifice anymore. So there could be a lot about um, what you're willing to sacrifice um, and what you're not when it comes to your beliefs, morals, and ethics. Um, so again, overall, we are seeing that over the last 20 years, we've been focused on greed, consumerism, and what we tried to obtain only to find out that it was false a false sense of security and stability, especially around credit cards, loans, mortgages, and agreements. Um, this can bring up the question of who makes the rules around these things. Um, this can lead to arguments around 
whose fault it is and how we make decisions around these themes. You know, are we in fear? Are we shopping out of ignorance? Are we indulging out of ignorance? You know, um, just kind of like uh, accepting the culture that's been sold to us, knowing damn well we don't have that same kind of privilege mindset um, to live within that code of ethics, right? And so really, really, really challenging people who don't have what it takes to live at the means of those things. Like you live in the projects. Why the fuck do you have a Ferrari? I'm being so dramatic, but I hope that makes sense about how, like, you know what I mean? Like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> You know, it could be stuff like that that's coming up. Like, are you living above your means when you really are not in the position to do so? And, you know, at the end of the day, free will and all, you could do whatever you want. But the pressure from Pluto and Capricorn is going to get so combusted, it's going to feel like you got a headache. Or if you don't do it, it's going to get so overwhelmingly painful that you are going to have to change or die. And that could be obviously metaphorically, but Pluto does rule life or death, <laughs> you know, birth and rebirth, you know, transformation, a change. And so looking at these situations differently is gonna become extremely crucial to surviving this transit especially with all the Leo energy, having Venus and Leo for the next four months. Um, ooh, I'm, I'm not, okay, I will not be an astrologer at this time. <laughs> I plead the fit. <laughs> and so um, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out for people you want to look at your Capricorn area of life what was coming up for you back in 2020 and, you know, prior to March of this year, what kind of things were you dealing with in your Capricorn area of life? Did you finalize them? Did you get a structure and system around them? Are you saying no and putting up boundaries? Um, you know, are you dotting your T's and crossing your I's? Are you holding yourself accountable? Are you responsible? Are you mature? You know, how have you bossed up in your life in a way that says I can afford to live the, the means that I'm living by type of thing? You know, um, either way, you know, we're going to be getting to the root of what real security is, essentially. That's what Pluto and Capricorn really wants us to do. Are we building a legacy? You know, um, are you preparing for... Uh, your your children who are coming up after you. You got to remember Capricorn is the opposite access to cancer. This is all about family and land and, um, you know, leaving something behind for your family and, you know, taking care of the kids, teaching them right from wrong and having them do things that will allow them to follow in your footsteps. And maybe they don't have to be doing the same thing, right? We in America are like the only people who get to have this argument like, well, kids can grow up today and do whatever the fuck they want. Meanwhile, you look at China and other places and you go to their stores, they got their whole family in there. And I swear, Every time it sounds like they're fucking arguing. It, that's probably why. Those kids don't want to be there doing that shit. But they have something to run back to. If they go get a job, shit don't work out, they can always go back to work with mom and pops type of thing. Our kids don't have that. And so we got to get past this idea of free will to the point where it's in detriment to our culture and leaving our kids to have to pick up pennies to uh, a person or a system or a structure that really don't give a fuck about them. You know, it's it's, it's like that kind of energy. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it, how it all plays out, but I, I can almost guarantee you a lot of people are not going to like the feeling. You know, even if you don't have kids, like my sister, 
uh, she doesn't have kids and she don't want no kids, but she still has her legacy. Her Pluto is like, if Pluto has to do with death and the whole process of death, then that includes life insurance and, and um, a, a will and testament and, you know, having that written out. So like, say you just so happen to have a lot of money. So what? You don't have any kids. Where is that money going? She got her shit all written out. Who the fuck thinks of that? Of course, she's a Scorpio. She's ruled by Pluto. She's thinking about this shit all the fucking time, right? And so, um, you know, these are the types of things that we also need to take into consideration. Do you have life insurance? Of course, we don't think it's important while we're young and living our best fucking life until somebody passes away. And now we got to ask the question, well, who's paying for that shit? Your ass should have paid for it by paying for life insurance. <laughs> You know, we have to get away from this idea of I've been I've been talking about this for a really long time. And we seem to have a really big fucking problem about participating in the 3D. But you have to live in this world and people are coming in and out of this world. At the very least, you want to you want to leave breadcrumbs. Who's that Hansel, Hansen and Griddle? For the people who are left behind, don't just leave them here having to suffer and relive trauma and pain over and over and over and over and over again. And then you wonder why we can't escape the 3D. You're not going through the process. And I bet you think you ain't got nothing to do with this. It's not your fault. It's not your problem. You're going to be just fine. Not realizing that you're leaving a mess, a heap of shit for the people who are left here when you go. Is that some selfish fucking shit? If you really think about it, it's ignorant, right? And I get it. You know, I'm not for any of the shit here on this 3d earth either but like i told you you when you're being taught a lesson through your spiritual blessings and evolving as a human um on this earth you can't take shortcuts you can't hide stuff under the rug you can't go around it you can't cheat you can't take you can't you just can't do it <laughs> Otherwise, whether it's through you or your bloodline, you are undoubtedly leaving your karma behind with the dusty mouth, like just blowing up all your dust in somebody else's face who's coming after you. And like, that's just not, it's not cool, you know? So we have to get past this ideology of wanting to escape the 3D without doing the work, right? Master the 3D. And you will elevate automatically. You have to believe that if you really, truly believe in spirituality. You know what I mean? You will live on this earth as if you are in heaven because you have been taken care of. You are taking care of your business. You are being mature and responsible around the things that can possibly come up to fuck your life up, right? And is it going to secure that you're never going to go through anything? Of course not. That's just not how it works down here. And you got to come to some type of agreement that that's what it is. But it doesn't mean that, you know, um, it can't be somewhat peaceful, right? So, you know, there's these types of things we have to contend with and uh, get past the psychological conditioning of those things. And so, um, you know, retrogrades are about introspection, inner growth and reevaluation. Doing the intense inner work brings inner truths to the surface. These can be things that have been overlooked, swept under the rug, <laughs> just said that, but it brings personal growth. You know, it's just challenging you to get to the truth and then, you know, do it. Like, don't just get the truth and be like, damn, I knew I shouldn't have done that shit and I didn't do it and I'm fucking screwed and then sit and wallow in your misery or your mistakes or your lack. You know, have your moment. You're human. It's a thing. It's going to happen. But you get your ass back up. You pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you get to fucking business. Get to work. Make it fucking happen. Like get on the good foot. Like let's 
fucking go. <laughs> so like, you know, the pain for staying the same will feel like death. Like, that's just what it is, period. I got nothing else for you guys. I'm trying to be nice here, but I got to tell the truth. Because I don't want spirit coming for me. I'm done. Like, I've had enough. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. As usual, family, I hope this information is helpful. I love and appreciate you. Peace.